All right, Saturday, October the 30th, about 327 in the evening here, afternoon. It's dark out here. These woods are dark. It's still drizzling rain. Wind's light, though, but variable. We're going to try to squirrel hunt out here a little. I got this blaze orange on. This is this juvenile deer hunting weekend. I can't deer hunt, but I'm going to squirrel hunt. I seen a squirrel right down there driving up here. I think that's the first one I'm going after. Alright. About 3.50 now. You hear that wind blowing. And it's raining out here pretty good. It ain't drizzling now. It's raining. I'm in a place here I'm going to watch. I suspect a lot of squirrels right now are down low and you can't see. You can't see them for the foliage still up on the ground. Weed stuff. Not enough cold weather. Got an old snag right over there. You might see that fork sticking up in the camp there. There's a few more den trees right up here. I was in here a few days ago. Squirrel control. That's what this little mission is here. Okay, now here's a tip now for, for you beginner squirrel hunters. Okay, you see where I'm standing here looking up? Okay. A lot easier to see a squirrel looking up in these conditions right here. Actually, even when the conditions are good, with the ground, you know, all the weeds and stuff dead, it's easier to see a squirrel when he goes up in a, a lot of times they'll perch two, three, four, five feet up, even in the wintertime when the leaves are off, okay, you can see him, okay? Looking down, you've got the backdrop of the foliage behind him, and it's a lot harder to spot him, okay? Setting still or moving. I do a lot of hunting like this right here, where I'm basically skylighting the, skylighting the squirrels, okay? helps. They're hard to see, even in the best of conditions sometimes. Okay, I've moved around the hill a little bit, okay? Are you people up north in the Midwest, you probably don't went through this, okay? Maybe they know one's these, but down in here in Tennessee, you got to be real careful here. You see that tree right there? Right that dead ash. And the winds are blowing out here. Right there's another one right there. Center of the camera. Right there's another one. There's another one. Now they're all dead. You don't want to spend a lot of time standing under them things, even if the wind ain't blowing, okay? Because the limbs on them things are dead. The whole tree bites sheer off. I've seen them breaking off six and eight feet above the top of the ground. Alright, I ain't seen no other squirrel up that one I seen driving in here. And the landowner went out of here and he's caught. He might have run that squirrel off. I never did see him no more. I looked for him. Anyway. Some people may like to take rest on trees when they squirrel hunt. I do. Shoot, I can't hold this old heavy gun up and make these long shots like I can off a tree. Anyway, see this tree right here, how she's a-leaning? Well, that ain't always the smartest thing to do when you're squirrel hunting. Because what's going to happen, you can get cut off up here on the right. Meaning when you try to put your gun on it, you see the, the scopes. The tree's got your scope, okay? So you don't get a full field of view sometimes. And it makes it awfully awkward, okay? And it'd be all right shooting off the left side, you know, up through there, but on this right side, it can be problematic. So try to find you a straighter tree if you can, but now I can't go in here no closer than what I am. This is all den trees right down in here, okay? And you don't want a tree that's too big. That makes it hard to shoot off of a great old big tree. But now sometimes I'll do it when I'm <clears throat> slipping on an old fox squirrel and trying to shade myself. You know, when I'm trying to get in on him, I'll try to hide behind the tree and line myself up with it. It's not my, you know, I don't like to shoot off of a big old tree. I can, but it ain't, it's harder to do. You'd think it would be easier, but it's actually harder. One about that size right there is real good. One the size of that little, whatever that thing is right there, that's a little bit small. We got these crows down here. Now I'm wearing this fluorescent orange we had in this. Let's see if I can call one in here and bust him. Crow season's open. Okay, we're gonna try these crows out. Now I'm wearing blaze orange standing here in the woods behind this tree here, old tree.
coming. Let's see if they lie. Okay, you can't kill crows hardly wearing blades orange, okay? Camo, I can kill them. I had a couple of them light up here, I don't know, 100 yards. I'd get ready to shoot one, but it would be light and then get up and then another one sit down. So the orange is out for the crows. I knew that, but see what they do out here. These woods are pretty dark. I could have got into that thing right there. Took this orange off, I might have worn one out. And see what this shooting stick's good for. You see them cedars right there before you walk through them, hit them with this stick, knock that water out of them. Keep some of that water off of you. Right. Let's quit squirrel hunting. I didn't see a single squirrel except for that one driving in, okay? I believe it. he's a little six pointer or he's a four pointer. I can't tell you. I've looked at him at 15 power on this next scope. See if I can get him in the camera here. It's pretty dark out here. 48 eggs, that ain't gonna be no good. It's 30. 24. Let me make sure this shutter open on this camera. Yeah, it's open. Looking at me and upset. That's a good, I don't know, pretty close 300 yards, I'd say. I ain't got no laser with me, but I know what 300 yards look like. It's dark out here in these woods. You know, it's dark. That's 19x on the camera. He's a bug. I don't know how this will turn out when I put it on YouTube. Okay, I got a good look at that deer. That was a six pointer, best I can tell. But here's another bug, that six pointer. He went up there to the right out of sight. Here's another deer up there. Now, I believe this was an eight pointer. There's a reason why I'm up here. I'm not gonna tell you, but I'm not deer hunting yet. Okay, see if we can get him in the camera there. He's hard to see. Yeah, it's 38 acres. It's getting dark out here. Let me make sure this shutter's open all the way. Yeah, it's open all the way. He's still right at about, he might be a little closer than that other deer. About 290. Get this camera zoomed out, it's hard to get on that deer over there, boy. There he is. Yeah, I see him. There's 48x on the camera. He ain't got too big a rag, but I think he's an eight pointer. He ain't the one I'm after. Okay, you might want some feedback on this Nexus scope. Element Nexus scope, okay? It's on this HM2 rifle. Okay, I can't see that deer with my naked eye up there in that field. I put this scope all the way up on 20 power and I can still see him good, okay? And I'd say next few minutes I'll have to back that scope off. I can still see him good and clear. I think it might have been a little brighter on like about 18, but now it's starting to get a little later. But now seeing this deer spotting with my naked eye standing still, I can't do it, okay? And I've got good eyes. But I can see him in that scope still at max 20 power. You know, it's getting pretty dark out here, so that's a good little test. I'm gonna see if you can see him in this camera. He's about to go out of sight up. Okay, that's twelve eggs. Thirty eggs. I don't 
hope you can see right there. No, it looks dark to me in this camera, okay? That's 19x. He's at about 300 yards now. 